what's going on people welcome back to the bagpipe channel tv there's loads to get into today surrounding the transfer window but obviously the big interview from Newcastle is chief executive officer darren eels that has came out in the last hour or so there is so much to digest and get through in that not the best of news in some parts but part and parcel of it i guess but i'm going to say how i feel we're going to put the facts on the screen and then make sure you are dropping in the comments below how you are feeling as well just a reminder white hats as you can see back in stock back by popular demand these have been sold out for ages they've been in they've been out they fly off the shelves they've already sold a couple just after it's putting on an instagram story seconds ago so if you want a white hat be quick the hoodies there's hardly any left but i did get a couple of new sizes in for people in the comments that wanted them some double xls a couple more larges all back in stock now not many literally a couple so be quick the magpie channel.com for your merchandise and so i was going to talk about obviously transfer rumors and stuff like that but we've got to start off with darren eel's interview because today this afternoon he has been dropping some bombshells mainly the point of this interview was to talk about newcastle's accounts for the year and on a positive they are very positive newcastle even though they are 70 odd million in losses i'll put the actual ones on the screen now i can't remember all the details off the top of my head but i'll put different images on the screen now the facts and stats but i even though we're 70 million something in in loss uh overall we have increased revenue by 40 percent nearly for back-to-back -back years it was 39 percent our revenue has went up this year it was the same last year so revenue wise we are doing really really well we're increasing the revenue we're increasing our commercial standpoint eels mentioned the fact that this doesn't include the champions league money this doesn't include the new adidas deal and this doesn't even include the new front of shirt sponsor sellout which is our biggest in our history in terms of financial gain from it so it doesn't include any of that and obviously eels pointed to the fact that he's really excited for adidas to come in and to get the retail side of things back at the club which we haven't had for years so there's going to be a lot of changes to newcastle's website and, and merchandise and club shops once Adidas take over, there's going to be loads more Newcastle United themed things and Adidas ranges that you can purchase, which will go straight back into the transfer kitty, hopefully, because this is what it's all about. This is what it's all about, the financial fair play. And Eels has said, you know, they are scared of that, they're aware of that. Look at Everton, 10 points deducted. It is real and they have to be very, very careful because as annoying as it is, having the richest donors in the world and not being able to spend money. It is so frustrating, man. We literally, if this was, we could be Chelsea all over again if it was early 2000s. We could spend whatever we want, buy whoever we want, and win a Premier League within a few years. Easy. But uh, we're having to do it the very hard way because FFP is real now and it has been brought in. And we are having to abide by it because of how tight we were in the past. And to make Ashley, we, uh, we can't spend anything, really. I mean, look, at the, if you hadn't seen it on your screen already before where it said, we only made three million pounds in player sales in that in that accountancy term so it's not great it's not great it makes life difficult for us and we haven't seen them all already but haven't put them on i have the facts and the stats on the screen about exactly what it means the profit and losses and stuff like that but uh i really want to talk about the main point is which has got everybody talking online as well and that is the the reveal from darren eels that he has warned the toon army to be prepared to lose your star players not exactly what you want to hear when you are uh, trying to go that way. You don't want to sell your best players because we've did that in the past under previous regimes and dropped back down. And obviously to get to the best, you want to keep your best. However, there is some understanding that's got to be put in place. Yeah, as much as it's going to hurt, as painful as it will be to sell one of our star players. And obviously the one that springs to mind straight away is Bruno Gimaresh. Because Paris Saint-Germain have been lined up 100 million, 115 million bids for him. Activate that release clause. That was reports from Brazil, from France, and now the UK. That that could be happening. Probably not in January, maybe the summer. But he's the one that you think of. And we know Bruno's passion and how, how brilliant he is. That that would be devastating to lose him. Of course it would. And like I said, you want to keep your best players. You don't want to see Bruno same for someone else. And then, you know, win the bloody Champions League. You want to do that here. You want to do that at us. But it is hard. It is really difficult to do that because we are stuck. We are stuck. Like Eels has said, we're going to have to sell to be able to buy. Basically, that's all we have to do. He mentioned the fact of the if you sign the player for 50 million, but you sold him for 50 million, you, you get a lot more from that. You know what I mean? Uh, I'll put the clip in now of what he said so he makes a bit more sense. 
it's worth 50 million profit if we were to move him if we move that player and bring in a player on the same wages at 50 million so like for like we amortize that player over five years it's only a 10 million hit so the net value of that is you create 40 million so there we go instead of me trying to remember because i've got loads of stuff to remember and get through in this video so that's what eel said and that's a prime example and that's how financial fair play work whether you like it or not star players are gonna be sold Isaac is one at the minute that's linked with Arsenal. Loads of press reports coming out the last day that Isaac is linked with the Gunners. Arteta wants a new striker. They've been knocked back by Brentford for Ivan Tony, who has said he will stay until the end of the season. Isaac was on Arsenal's shortlist years ago before we got him. They've been linked with him because that's where that new Thierry Henry slogan came from. And there they've seen how well he's done at Newcastle and they fancy a bit of that now. However, I'm unsure on this one. Uh, down the line, yeah, if we, Eels are saying it. We're going to have to sell star players. Isaac and Bruno, first two that come to mind. And you think you're Joe Linton, you're Botmans. But when you think of Isaac, honestly, I said it after the Sunderland game, been saying it, he's genuinely world class. I think he is one of the best strikers in the world. Clinically, finishing, amazing. It's just his fitness to get. Is it because he's been pushed too soon at Newcastle and he hasn't been able to get a good rhythm because of the the Wilson being out, so he's come back early and knocks and all the game is a week and everything, so that could play a part, but we really need to see he's like in a full season, like a good stretch of it, because his injury record hasn't been the best, but his goal scoring record and his impact certainly is, and I absolutely love him, so I'd be devastated to lose Isaac, like, and Arsenal sniffing around him, and when teams here of things like this and they see these interviews by Eel, that'll set their tail right up, that'll, that'll sell alarm bells to them saying, right, Newcastle need to sell, they're up for sale. Get amongst it. Yeah, tell you what, we we said we needed a midfielder. Bruno's, they'll, they'll accept an offer for Bruno. Yes, it'll cost a lot of money. But what doesn't cost a lot of money these days? Look at Chelsea. When they paid 105 for Enzo Fernandez. Looks crap. Caicedo, one good season. 100 million, 120 million, whatever it was. Crap. Do you know what I mean? So, it's these things where you think Bruno will go for that much, could go for that much, and probably warrants it. Do you know what I mean? So... People will look now at Newcastle and think, wow, they're, they're in that early phase of the project, the transition, they are going to have to sell players. Let's go in for Bruno. I tell you what, our defender's injured. He, he's passed it a little bit now, isn't he? He's old a bit. Man United, if they had the money, Botman, get him in. Give him loads of money. And by the sounds of it, what Eel's saying is we would accept it. We would literally accept it. I, I'd I think Bruno would love to stay here. I think Bruno wouldn't want to move from the tune for a good couple of years. I think long term, he'd love just play in Spain, play out of Real Madrid or whatever. But I think for another year or two, he'd happily stay at Newcastle United. But the weird sound is that if an offer came in today, never mean next summer or next week, that they would have to accept it. And they would, they would do because they need that to reinvest in the squad. Just because of financial fair play, how it works, would have to accept 50 million, 100 million, whatever it is for one of our big name players, so then we can invest, because then that would allow us to sign two, three, four players with the way it all works. So... It's not great. It's it's upsetting. I see a lot of people uh, really angry at this on social media and people upset with the owners and things like that. But, I mean, it's not them wanting to do it. It's, it's kind of having to do it because of financial fair play. If we keep a hold of these best players, great, but then we can't send anyone else. So it's a kind of catch-22 situation, really, isn't it? Where if we kept Bruno, that's fantastic, but oh, we can't afford to send anyone else. Or we kept Isaac, great, but we can't afford to send another forward to compete with them. Whereas if you sold Isaac then you could bring in two two or three, four players. Because Isaac money as well, by the way, if Bruno's going for 100 to 115, Isaac, we sign him for 60-odd. He's got to be going for about 100 as well. 85, 90, 100, easy. So that would be a lot of money on the table as well. So let me know what you think anyways of uh, Newcastle saying that they're going to have to sell their star players. We've talked about that for enough. It's time to move on about who could be coming in. And earlier on, I'll wait on the screen now, Mitrovic, back the tune. I mentioned this in my video a couple of days ago. Alexander Mitrovic, get it done. Saudi loan, make it happen, make sense, come on. And now it's coming out in the press, and this was said this morning, that we could be in the market for him. Uh, this was saying here yeah, that you know we, we haven't really got the money for that 50, 60 million it would take to get Dominic Solanke, so why not go for Alexander Mitrovic on a free from Al Halal, on a loan, sorry, not a free. Well, it would be free, wouldn't it? Just not permanently. Loan deal. For Mitro, bring back Mitro Al Halal, obviously owned by the same owners as Newcastle United, so that would make things nice and easy. He knows how to score goals in the Premier League. He self-confessed to be in a magpie and a Geordie boy when he beat Sunderland with Fulham, so he loves it. I think he would love the chance to return here and prove himself and to get back in the Premier League. So that would be one. 
that would be a great signing really help us up top give us a different option up there and I'd love to see it happen but Eels to be fair in that, in that same interview did say that we're not going to make any loan signings from Saudi as it stands I mean he's saying that as it stands that could change tomorrow so I wouldn't take that too seriously but he was saying at the moment uh, we're not going to make any deals with Saudi clubs we're not in talks to sign players from Saudi Arabia which again I find strange we really didn't want that approval from the Premier League where they were going to stop you signing players from your same parent clubs or the Saudi loan market that that didn't go through we can't do that and for us not to capitalise on that it seems so strange to me especially we've got all these FFP problems and we don't want to pay 7 million for Phillips on loan if Ruben Neves doesn't want to come great is there not someone else they've signed fucking loads of players in Saudi surely there's one of them that, that we can get to come over here whether that's Mitro or a different midfielder or a keeper or something surely we can capitalise on that market a little bit but that's the link to Mitrovic another ex-Magpie that has returned is Isaac Hayden he has been recalled from his spell over in Belgium at Standard Liège however it doesn't look like he's set to stay on Tyneside with loads of clubs sniffing around him from the Championship the likes of Birmingham and even Sheffield United in the Premiership are eyeing up a move for Isaac Hayden. I've seen some suggestions online that give him a chance, you know, of how ravaged our midfield is. He could be the one that sits there defensively. That's the type of player we need. Hayden isn't good enough anymore. It's not 2015. We're kind of be having Isaac Hayden on the side. No way. His legs are completely gone as well. Love Hayden. Brilliant servant for the club. But uh, that ship has well and truly sealed. But hopefully, good luck to Hayden and he gets a decent move now that he is back in the tune. Don't think he'll be here for long. Right then, people, I think that'll do for this video. As always, drop your opinions below. Lots to talk about. Eels' interview, the transfer rumours, all of that stuff. Drop a like on this one if you haven't already. Subscribe to the Magpie Channel TV and I'll see you on the next one.